Do you plan to support this child? What was that? Oh, uh, yeah, of course I'm gonna take care of my baby, you know? I love my girl. And, you know, I know this is my baby, so we're gonna do what we have to do to take care of my ba my child, you know what I mean? I'll get a job, you know, no, no more no more running from child support from other baby mamas. But, you know, I'm gonna try to do right by this baby, so. Do you think this is your baby? Oh, yeah, w without a doubt. I know this is my baby. Uh, I know my girl... You know, I know she's faithful and she wouldn't do me like that. She she wouldn't uh she wouldn't cheat on me, right? So I I know we gonna we're gonna be okay together. Okay everyone, stay tuned. What's coming up is real good. Right now the presumed baby daddy is backstage taking a paternity test and I don't know about you, but she's been looking pretty nervous the whole time on stage here, so this is gonna be good. And welcome back to the channel. In case you're wondering why this is in black and white, it's because it's from my previous video, the one I just put out about installing the cams. Uh, I actually missed a step here and someone in the comments section let me know about this. So I really appreciate that. I was able to go back and fix my mistake and apply the silicone right here. And once again, bagging and tagging, everything really comes in hand, especially for when you've been storing things long term like I've been doing. So it's nice to be organized and be able to find the things I need. Originally I was going to set the timing of the engine and include it in my previous video which was installing the camshafts. The problem with that is that video is already titled as something else. So I thought about people who are going to be looking for this information, what they would type in in YouTube and they're going to have a hard time finding this. So just to make things easier, I decided to make a separate video on it and title it appropriately so that people could just find the video much easier and less hassle. You may have noticed that in this clip I don't have the camshafts installed and that just goes to show how I did intend to have the installation of the camshafts and setting the timing all to be in one video. Now for a little while I did think about using the original timing guys that came with this engine because honestly they were in great condition. But I knew I would never be happy with myself if I decided to use the old ones. I would lose sleep over it and all kinds of stuff like that. So just to be on the safe side and you're in there already, it's why I decided to replace them. In the previous video, you saw me install the RBC cam gear, which is native to the RSX head that I'm running. I decided to ditch that and use a modified drag cartel gear. This gear is physically modified to reach a maximum of 40 degree VTEC while the old one could reach up to 50 degree. And I'm gonna make that easy for you to see right there. They have it scribed. There you go, 40 degree from Drag Cartel. Because of the setup that I'm running, going into full 50 degree VTEC can cause major problems. So I decided to go this route just to play it safe. Now sure, the ECU could limit it to 40 degree, but I didn't wanna take that chance. Now here I'm just rotating the camps to get them more or less in a ballpark of where they have to be. You can see the two lines in the center of where each sprocket is supposed to pretty much meet up with each other. So I'm just trying to get it within the ballpark like I mentioned, but there's an easier way to do this. So we're at the front of the cams or what I want to call the front of the cams. So if we go look at the back of the cam, you're going to see this small window right here with the circle. And as you rotate the camshaft, you're going to see it come into alignment with this little drilled hole. At that point, you could get a drill bit and place it inside of here. And it's going to guarantee that your timing marks are dead on. So also right here on the exhaust camshaft, we're going to perform the same exact task. And again, another drill bit inside of here is going to hold everything in place. And when we come to the front, we could see the two lines line up on the sprockets. And if you go to the top, the dot is just about the 12 o'clock position. So everything is looking great. And on the intake side, you can see that dot lines up with the arrow. So everything is looking good as far as the sprockets on top and it's in time. With that taken care of, now we can focus on the crank sprocket. These two arrows have to match up. So we're going to have to rotate the crank.
Now because of the angle of my camera, it looks like the arrows are just off a little bit, but they're not, they are perfectly lined up. And now we could grab our timing chain. I have two suggestions here. Number one, never reuse an old timing chain. And number two, make sure you're using an OEM Honda chain. Looking at the chain, you're gonna see five gold color links. Two of them are in sets right next to each other as you can see right here. And if you look at the bottom side of the chain, you're gonna have one gold color link. The dots on the sprockets that are pretty much facing straight up at this point have to go between the two color links. So on the exhaust side here, you can see it's pretty easy to set into place because it's the first one we're doing. So the dot is between the two color links. And now we're gonna go do the same exact thing on the intake side. Now you can see it's off just by a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab my ratchet and we're actually gonna turn the gear just a hair just so that the chain could fall into place. At this point, the chain that's bridging both of the cam gears should have no slack at all. It should be nice and tight. And I'll show you that in just a second. Now we could actually go down to the crank sprocket. So we're just gonna align our chain here and get it around the sprocket here. Now everything should be really close to where it has to be. There's gonna be a line and a dot on your sprocket telling you where that final gold link has to go. Now because I'm using an aftermarket sprocket, mine doesn't have that little dot that's right here. But basically that line or that dot is exactly where the gold link should end up on. And again, the camera angle is kind of throwing it off, but you can see the gold link lines up perfectly with the line. At this point, you just have to keep tension on the chain so it doesn't move or fall out of place. On the right side, the chain should be nice and tight. And on the left side, you should have all of your slack or the loose side of the chain. Now we could grab your brand new tensioner. And I say brand new because you really should replace your tensioner. You don't want to reuse the old one because they have a high failure rate as it is. So it's what I recommend and it's what everyone else recommends if you ever look into this. With the tensioner all torqued down, you can now pull the pin. And I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze these two together make sure the tensioner is engaging in its teeth and it's holding pressure on the chain at this point. And of course, don't forget to remove your drill bits or whatever else you use to secure this. Here I'm just rotating the engine to make sure I don't feel anything weird and just to give it an overall look. And it's really an accomplishment to see all of this stuff moving and working together for the first time. It's just, it's amazing. Now that the chain is in place, I can install the upper chain guide and torque down these bolts. And the final piece I'm gonna be installing in this video is an aftermarket part now it's not necessary at all but i figure i'm in here and i want to give it a shot and who knows it may benefit me in the future so basically what it's supposed to do is sit very close to the lower half of the timing chain and if you ever have to remove your head or your camshafts and you end up losing tension on the chain it's supposed to prevent the lower chain from falling off of the sprocket and essentially going out of timing so that's the whole point of it. It's just basically to keep the chain within timing as far as the lower half, if you ever had to come in here for maintenance. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of slack here. So when you tighten down these bolts, just uh, make sure it's not coming in contact with the chain and just go ahead and tighten it down to your normal torque specs. And that's it for this one. So I had a lot of fun making this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you are considering subscribing, don't forget to hit that little notification bell. It really helps out. And like always, thanks for watching. Okay, I'm ready for the results. You are not the father.
She's running backstage. Follow her. Thank <laughs> you.